Welcome to the Hockey Writers Prospect Corner, a show with our top prospects writing crew, bringing you the latest news, analysis, scouting reports, mocks, rankings, and much more. From the world juniors to the NHL draft floor, from the farm to the NHL, our team covers everything that happens in the world of prospects. So sit back, grab a notebook, and get ready for Prospect Corner. Prospect Corner. And welcome into another episode of the Prospect Corner here at the Hockey Raiders. Uh, we're right in World Junior time now. And uh, again, joined by my fellow Prospects experts, Peter Barracchini and Greg Boyson. Uh, we're back to talk World Juniors again, our second preview show. Uh, our first one was on a couple uh, lesser countries. But this, this time we're going to get into the big guns. Um, at least one of them. Uh, in uh, we're going to go with uh, Russia, Czech Republic, and uh, Switzerland. So we're going to kick it off right away here. I mean, uh, get let's get to one of the bigger guys, bigger powers, you know, in the last few years and going way back um, is Team Russia. Um, they've got some great names, you know, up front, and we'll talk about the big name. I mean, <laughs> he's not supposed to be drafted till next year. <laughs> Is uh, you know who I'm talking about, guys. Uh, Matt Bay Mitchkov. I mean, this guy's just amazing. They got they got some great names apart from him and Fyodor Svechkov, Nikita Chibrikov, Vasily Ponomaryov. But I mean, is this the Matt Bay Mitchkov show, uh, Peter? Uh, is this the guy this year? I mean, is he Ovechkin? It, short answer: Yes. Um, I mean, yes, to Ovechkin. Yes to the Matt Bay Mitchkov show. I mean. We thought that his play at the World Junior uh, World uh, Under 18, sorry, was impressive uh, with 12 goals and 16 points in seven games as, you know, a, a 17 year old. I mean, that was absolutely impressive. Like, that just wowed everybody. And now, still being a, kind of a double underager in a tournament where it's going to be predominant 18, 19 year olds. And he's probably going to steal the show. Like, let's face it. This guy has an innate ability to just find the back of the net nonstop. His awareness, his shot, his accuracy, it all just screams elite level goal scoring potential, similar to that of Ovechkin. And we're seeing what he's doing right now. Um, you know, you go back and look at his goal scoring records at the U16 level. He scored 70 goals in 26 games, 35 and 50 um, you know, five points in the KHL this season, but you know what, going back to the MHL, he's recorded 15 points with SKA St. Petersburg and 13 and uh, with, uh, Varyagi Mor Morozova. So this guy's putting up the points. He's putting up the goals. There's no doubt that this is going to be his show. This is going to be his moment. Granted that they, like you mentioned, they do have a lot of depth up front and a lot of other players possibly coming down as well or coming into camp as well, there's no doubt that he's probably going to be a top in a top six role and be their offensive threat every single time that they're going to be on the ice. So yeah, definitely going to be the Matt Bay Mitchkov show. It, it's amazing. To, to, we're, we're headlining a guy that's not even supposed to be drafted this year. I mean, mm -hmm. usually we're headlining <laughs> guys that have been drafted or this uh, draft. Will so be, yeah. just what he's been doing is just amazing. He's been on highlight reels, Ever since, I mean, it's been a. He's already he's broken Ovechkin some of Ovechkin's records, right? Uh, think, yeah. Junior already too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my gosh, this, this guy's going to be the next Ovechkin. I I believe so. I mean, this we have Ovechkin in the NHL still, and um, I think he could have that type of career as well. So, I uh, look I'm forward to watching that guy. Sergey as well. Yeah, right. That, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so. It, it's it, it's amazing what he's done and uh he's going to be one of the exciting guys to watch in this uh in this tournament and moving forward as well so but there are some other guys on that team <laughs> um reports are saying that uh, there's gonna be guys that are gonna be joining their uh team in north america once everyone kind of gets here and uh through all that uh covid stuff and all that but uh greg who you have your eye on that are may join this team uh in north america here well, before I, I get into that, I'm going to pre-apologize over the next couple of weeks as we travel through Europe of me butchering <laughs> every single name that comes up here. Um, just going to get that out of the way. I'm a writer, not an announcer for a reason. So that's going to get that out of the way so you don't get mad at me when I completely destroy all these names. But there's four guys that I, I kind of circled 
playing in North America that I think have really good shots to uh, play for Russia and be contributors. Two guys up front, two guys on defense. Um, Matt Faye Petrov is one of the guys. Uh, he's killing it for North Bay in the OHL right now. He's got uh, 17 goals, 42 points in 25 games already this year. He's got just a quick release, a deadly wrist shot. He is just, uh, he's a dynamic player. I'd be shocked if he wasn't on the team. Uh, Daniel Guchin is another player that's uh, just having a fabulous run here in North America. Um, you know, he's a, he's a third round pick of the star of the, I'm sorry, the Sharks. Um, it started last year in the USHL. He played for uh, the Muskegon Lumberjacks and just had a phenomenal season with 32 goals, 64 points in 46 games. And now uh, he's over with the Ice Dogs in Niagara and he's having another big year. Uh, 15 goals already, 20 games. You know, another great playmaker. He's also a really good back checker and could force turnovers. And as we'll get in a little bit later, some of the things I'll talk about, but forcing mistakes and taking advantage of those mistakes are so key at this level in this tournament. So you got a guy that can get back and play some defense and, and cause some turnovers there as well. And on the back end, uh, another Daniel, Daniel uh, Chaka is another, uh, he's a defenseman that I think is going to play. Uh, he's a recent second round pick of the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, he's definitely can add some offense from the blue line. He's got six goals and 25 points uh, for the Gulf Storm in 25, uh, 20 points, in 25 games playing defense. Pretty good production there. And then another, the last guy, I think they got another defense from more of the, def the defender, uh, stay at home type. And that's Jan Kuznetsov, who's a, a second round pick of the Calgary Flames, but actually playing for them. Uh, in the AHL, the Stockton Heat, uh, he doesn't have any points in 12 games, but he's not there to score points. This is uh, this is a big dude, and 6'4", over 200 pounds at 19 years old, obviously could be one of the biggest players in this tournament. He's that physical uh, big defenseman that, you know what, you want to stand in front of that, you better get ready to take a beating from this guy. So those are the four guys who are playing in North America now that I think – um, will be on that roster when the tournament gets underway. Yeah, it's uh, there's again, the Russia is going to be a stack team offensively. Uh, we'll talk about their defense here in a sec, but uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be uh, a powerhouse. That's for sure. You know, I'll get Matt, I'll get you involved in the conversation here. I mean, Russia traditionally likes to bring an older team, uh, to the tournament, they like to get right up, you know, get those experienced guys, but they've got a lot of younger players, uh, intriguing younger players this year. How many of these uh, 2022 draft el eligible players do you see making the team this year, which is kind of against their usual strategy? Well, I mean, we talked about Michkov, but he's next draft. Uh, talking about this one is uh, Ivan Mirshashenko. I mean, this guy how can you not have him on the team? I mean, he's, he's going to be a top five uh, pick as some people say two, three, maybe um, he's, he's great at, at entering the zone. He's great at pu the puck possession. Uh, he's got a great shot. He's, he's an all around talent. So I think leaving him off the team would be a mistake. I think he will be on this team. Uh, another guy is Danila Yurov. Uh, he's got no points uh, so far in where he's playing, but I mean, that's uh, whatever. I mean, this, this guy's still going to be, um, it's kind of hard to say what in these leagues of what production and if that's going to be indication of future success, I don't think you should take much into that, but he's got great talent. I don't know if he'll be on the team. He probably will. Like you said, a lot of the time, Russia uh, stays with the older guys, but they're having uh, Michkov on the team and he's way younger than everyone else. So, uh, but how can you not, uh, have Mir Shashenko for sure on this team. I think he could be uh, a threat to, even if he's not a top producer, he's going to be a threat on the ice. You need to have as much as you can, especially when you're playing against the U S and Canada, you're going to need as much uh, forward depth as you, you know, you can take. So Mir Shashenko is a hundred percent going to be on this team for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's the forwards, you know, but we'll talk about the a quick fire. Let's do a quick fire round table on this one. Uh, the goaltender, uh, Yaroslav Askarov. We've talked about him in the past. Um, 
top goaltending prospects for the Nashville Predators. This is his third time uh, in this tournament. Do you think this is the time uh, he'll win a gold medal? I mean, uh, he's got probably this is, this is his last time in this tournament. Uh, Peter, we'll start with you. Uh, do you think uh, Russia has a chance? Will he lead them uh, to a gold medal? Yeah, I, 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 obviously the answer is you'd like to see it. I mean, given the fact that the, he was a phenom coming in at, you know, 16, 17 years old in 2020 or in 2019, 20 has somewhat of a better tournament in 2020, 21. And now you're hoping that the third time is a charm. Like you said, um, you know, given the fact that, you know, I think there is a lot of hype surrounding him. Uh, he had the skill set. He had the tools. I think he, as we saw more of him, he just needed to, you know, bring it, bring everything together and try and find that consistency. I mean, he's dominated the KHL. It's just this tournament seems to be, kind of a tipping point and maybe you shouldn't put too much stock into a junior tournament and focus on what he's doing in the KHO, which is still very phenomenal. But given the fact that, you know, they have more of a complete defensive style this year, Shakir Makamadoulin on defense has, you know, rounded out his game, considering the fact that that was a risky pick. They got some more stay at home two way kind of puck moving defenseman in their system right now. I think that's going to help them more in the long run than just thinking all oh, offense. Cause you even have Carol Kirsanov, who's uh, potentially, Buying for a spot on the team as well. Um, you know, it, it, they, they have depth right now, and, and that's the main important thing. So the fact that they have depth on the fence is going to make Askarov's job a lot easier. So I'm hoping that maybe if it's not a gold medal, at least they're pushing for a medal at this point, and he can add it to the collection from the silver that he had. But obviously with Russia, the main objective is gold. There, there, there's no yeah. other way around it. So if they're going to go far, Askarov is going to be the backbone of that team no matter what. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Greg, you agree with that? Uh, Dick Askarov has a chance at getting that gold medal uh, for the third, you know, in his third go around here. Obviously, gold medal or bust for him. It's his last time out, and his first two tournaments are kind of average. Um, you know, he's excelled at every level he's been at, except for whatever reason, this tournament kind of, eh. And you definitely don't want to start to have that reputation at a young age of a guy that can't win the big game. Obviously, it's way too yeah. early for that, but people are going to start talking. If he comes out here and has another, say, percentage below nine 900, you know, gives up a few flu fluky goals early in this tournament, that's going to be the storyline. So if he wants to erase that, he needs a big tournament. This, this kid's the real deal. And, and, and these tournaments are so hard to really, like – you know how far they go in overall development they do really well as far as getting your name out there as getting drafted getting you know all the publicity but as far as hey this goalie struggle at a couple of world juniors he's he's a bust he, that's just un mm -hmm. totally unfair and ridiculous so um he absolutely has a chance to dominate this tournament and you know the team in front of him has to play better too i mean he, everybody looks at his numbers but it's not all the goalie's fault you know as we all know so um, you know, Peter mentioned a, a, a deeper defensive uh, core likely this time around. So that should help take pressure off of him where he doesn't have to make the highlight real saves and just make the make the saves that he's supposed to. And then when he needs to, you know, be spectacular, he can definitely do it. So um, gold medal or bust. I don't know if he gets it done. If I if I could predict these kind of things, um, you know, I'd probably be. Um, sitting on a giant pile of money, but um, <laughs> it's going to be tough. I mean, he's, he's going to be facing some of the best players in the world as all these goaltenders are. So, but I, I, he's definitely, I think Russia with him in that and the exciting offensive players we've talked about, if their defense plays, you know, above average, they don't have to be spectacular, but if their defense plays above average, this definitely is a gold medal contender. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, Askarov is going to be a big key to that. Uh, but again, it's a team game. You're going to have to have everyone performing at a high level, uh, defense, offense, everything. So um, if you want to find out more about it in a written form, uh, we have our Russia preview out at the Hockey Writers. Uh, uh, Jordan Jacklin, um, usually a Buffalo Sabres writer, on Sabres Scoop as well. Uh, he put that together. So give that a read. Uh, we got all the previews out now for all the teams. So uh take a look at Russia there, if you, you know, in a deeper form, uh, instead of just, uh, you know, us talking about it here, uh, you can read about it as well. So uh, take a look at that. Um, let's move on uh, to the Czech Republic. 
uh, you know, this team is not going to be a huge favorite, but they have some intriguing names on this roster that uh, could potentially surprise. So you never know. Uh, we'll first talk about the blue line, which is going to be, you know, they have a couple big names on there. Uh, Stanislav Svozil and David Juracek. You know, Svozil was drafted this past draft. Juracek is a 2022 eligible prospect. He's a top prospect too. Uh, Peter, do you think this is the top pairing? These are the guys that are going to play a lot of these minutes uh, for the Czech Republic here. Yeah, I don't know what the coaching staff has in mind in regards to both Juracek and Svozil. Obviously, Svozil is going to earn a lot of minutes, but I would love to see the pairing of Svozil and Juracek, mainly because it's a great balance. You have the two-way defensive mind of Svozil, who is capable of, you know, having great great separation with the puck you know getting in getting into the lanes having great one-on-one um situations blocking pucks i mean he he he's he's a real two-way deal and then on the flip side of things you have an offensive minded defenseman in david yurichek who's always on the go always thinking offense um he's got a really great shot great offensive awareness um walks the line very well to try and get into position, very great speed and transition. And also he's got a mean side to him. He's very physical. Um, I mean, right now he's already at 49 penalty minutes in uh, the top check league with HC Plazen. So the fact that, you know, he's got great production, he's mean, he's tenacious, he's offensively driven. I think that's going to bo- go well for the Czech Republic, whether he's going to be driving his own line or sharing the spotlight with Vozo. Um, I, I, I would love to see that. Again, I don't know what their plan is, but if it is Svozo and Juracek, that's going to be one fun pairing to watch. Yeah, I I, I agree. I mean, Svozo, we talked at length last uh, year with the draft, and uh, he was drafted a little lower than everyone thought he would. Yeah. And so, I mean, he's having another chance to kind of prove why, you know, teams prove to everyone that he shouldn't have been passed over <laughs> uh, in that draft. So uh, it's going to be exciting to see. And Juracek, of course, is going to be drafted this year. So uh, this is going to be a big showcase for these two. Uh, Greg, we'll talk, let's go to the offense. Um, Jan Misak, again, there's another guy drafted way lower than everyone thought he should have been. He'll be returning after seven and nine last year. He had seven points in nine games last year. The offense. Does it run through this guy uh, or um, is there anyone else that you think will be able to help him out? Or is this just him? Um, well, he's definitely the, the focal point of their offense. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you mentioned this tournament last year. He's He's b- been playing well this year. Uh, last year he played um, in the AHL and struggled. But I mean, as a teenager, you know, first time in North America it, 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 playing professional, you know, that's tough. But he's bounced back this year. Um, he's he's with the Hamilton Bulldogs, of course, in the OHL, where he's got 17 goals and 31 points in 24 games already. Um, you know, he's already got five and ten and seven international games for the Czech Republic this year. So there's no doubt that the offense, as he goes, it goes. Um, you know, he's uh, just a really good north-south player, always coming straight at you. Uh, strong on the four check and that's going to be big in this tournament you know teams that can four check usually are the teams that succeed um you know it, it, at this level causing pressure and turnovers usually leads to, to prime scoring chances and teams like the czech republic who are going to have to make an upset here or there to make some noise they gotta they gotta force the issue and he's he's the type of player that does that there's a couple other guys though it's not just a one-man show um pavel novak is another guy he was on um he was on the team last year he'll probably be up there with my sick too um you know he's he's playing good in uh the whl um in Kelowna. he's got uh, 11 goals and 26 points this season he's already he's got five and 11 and 07 international games too so he, those two guys are going to be the focal point uh he's a very quick skater and playmaker um, he seems to do more damage as far as scoring goals when on the power play more so than at five on five, but you know, a, a recent fifth round pick of the Minnesota wild, definitely a guy that uh, they'll need to contribute. And one guy that another guy that we, you don't hear a lot about, he's not drafted. He's not 
high on anybody's draft board, but I think he's going to get an elevated role in this tournament. Uh, and that's Thomas uh, Hubna. If I said that right, I don't think you pronounced the C, um, but he's uh, he's he's a big forward, uh, big winger over six foot two. Um, he's been kind of bouncing up through levels in the Czech Republic this year, but in the in the U20 level, uh, he's got seven goals and 15 points in nine games. So he's, he's he brings the size. He's got some scoring. Uh, he's a guy that I think can get an elevated role. Wasn't on the team last year, so this will be his first uh, world junior experience. So hopefully, uh, as far as they go, they, they're going to need to find somebody besides those top two. And he'd be my first pick as a guy that can have a sneaky, good tournament. Quick editorial note on my part. Um, the seven and uh, seven and nine was all U 20 tournaments in the tournament last year. He had three points in five games, but still really good production. So that was my mistake on that. All righty. Still good production. Oh yeah. (laughs) Definitely. Uh, Definitely a player to watch, uh, and we'll uh, we'll stick um, with the Czech Republic. And, and Matt, I'll throw this one to you. As far as their goaltending goes, uh, no no Nick Malik or or Lewis uh, Perik this year. They're going to go with Jan or uh, sorry Jan Bednar, um, who is playing over in the queue this year, doing pretty good. Um, so is it safe to say that their fortunes are going to lie on what young Mr. Bednar does between the pipes? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, he's another Detroit Red Wings uh, prospect uh, drafted in the fourth round in 2020. So um, he's a super athletic uh, goaltender. Uh, he can make those highlight real saves. He's you're looking at the QMJHL. He's got over three uh, goals against average, but in that league, I mean, it's it's hard to say is that bad or is that good i mean there's a lot of offense that goes through that league so um you know he's a 902 save percentage i went to katie bathurst so i mean but yeah but for the czech republic he's gonna have to be good i mean uh going against any of these top ta- top powers they're gonna he's gonna be thrown a lot of offense uh, through his way and it's gonna be the defense's job to make his life easier um, but he definitely has the potential to be that goaltender that can steal a game. So uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to have, you know, the team's going to have to make it that he's not having to make those ridiculous saves all the time, because if he's having to be responsible for doing that every game, I don't think the Czech Republic are going to go very far, but uh, he definitely has the chance to be that goaltender like a Tuka Rask was way back when, and, you know, stand on his head every game. Um, but he's going to be exciting to watch and uh, another goaltending prospect uh, of the Red Wings. So uh, we'll see what he can do in this tournament. Um, Yeah. So there's the Czech Republic. Uh, Again, there's a preview uh, over at the hockey writers. Austin Stanovich did that one. Uh, He's, you know, that, that uh, there's a lot of, a lot of good stuff in that article uh, going with the defense goaltending forwards, all that stuff. So take a look at that uh, at the hockey writers for that preview. So that's uh midway point of this show. Uh, we'll get to our last team, uh, Switzerland in, in a bit here, but yeah, if you, if you enjoy the show, uh, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and the like, uh, like button that uh, on YouTube, uh, make sure checking out all the other shows we have on the on the network as well at Blackhawks Banter, Maple Leafs Lounge, um, Chicks and Sticks, and you know Howlers and Growlers, whole ton of uh, different shows. Oilers Overtime as well there um, from our writers here at the Hockey Writers, uh, and also uh, check out the Morning Skate newsletter. There's uh, great content every day, uh, five days a week uh, on um, MorningSkate.io to subscribe there if you're not already. You should be already subscribed. <laughs> uh, we've mentioned every show so uh daily download as well on the website um yeah make sure you're just checking out everything as world juniors uh like i say we have all the preview posts there now so uh take a look at all the teams so let's let's continue with our last team here uh, in switzerland um they're again a le- le- lesser ranked but again we've we've seen surprising results from this team in the past uh they've surprised canada um, in the Olympics with Martin Gerber's uh, big, I mean, I still remember that game watching uh, how's Canada losing to Switzerland to yeah. nothing. Um, but I mean, Gerber was the, the story in that. Um, but that, I mean, Switzerland surprised Canada very recently too. I think it was the 2018 uh, world championships. Uh, they gave them a scare uh, there too. So, I mean, 
you can't overlook Switzerland. They don't have the big names uh, like Nino Niederreiter or anything like that this this time around, or Roman Yossi, but they do have some guys that we can take a look at. Uh, Greg, let's start with the forwards and Simon Simon Knack. Um, he's one of the many returning forwards. Uh, what do you think his impact on this team will be without uh, some big names? He's going to be – he's going to bring the leadership. He was the captain uh, last tournament for the Swiss team, so he'll – pretty sure he's going to get that C again. Uh, he had a goal in four games last time around. He's been playing, you know, top level Swiss hockey, HC Davos, where he's got three goals in seven games and 23 points. So he's, he's, he's going to bring that, that experience and that leadership. And for teams like Switzerland, man, the more experience you get playing against, you know, these top notch teams, uh, the, the better off you're going to be. Um, you know, he's, he's had a pretty good, you know, before he went back to Switzerland this year, but before that he spent two years in, in the WHL playing for, uh, Portland Winterhawks, where he put up 25 goals and 63 points over two seasons. So, you know, he's, 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 a, he can produce. There's little doubt about that. He's really good for checker. Um, it has a, uh, no pun intended, but he has a knack for, uh, causing turnovers and as i mentioned earlier that's gonna be huge for swiss for the switzerland team if they can force teams to cause turnovers call, have their defensemen cough up their puck in their own end and take advantage of it that's that's going to be the biggest way that they can compete in this tournament and and push to get out of the uh pool play um you know they don't have the firepower as you know a russia a canada a united states they have to rely on taking it first causing mistakes and then taking advantage of that. So he's going to be one of those guys that through his four check and his constant pressure um, has a chance to set up some good scoring chances. So it'll be up to him and the rest of his teammates to kind of um, take advantage of that when it happens. So um, he's going to be, he's going to be their, their top player. I think, um, you know, not necessarily, on the score sheet, but, but likely, but again, that experience playing professionally, um, you know, playing in North America for two seasons, all that is going to add up into, uh, you know, why he's going to be the captain and, and the guy that's going to lead this team. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Knack's one of the guys, uh, but they also have a guy at Lorenzo Canonica who uh, wasn't drafted this past draft. Uh, very surprisingly, Peter, does he help out and, you know, help out and be a force offensively on this team? Because um, they need someone more than Knack to do it. Yeah, I was still kind of, I'm, I'm so in shock that he didn't get drafted because he was someone that I had, you know, in my top 100, at, at worst top 120. But at the same time, yeah, this is a player that's had a major jump from his draft year where he only had 16 points in 24 games with the Shinnewinigan Cataracts. He's up to just under a point per game with 26 and 28 this year with 10 goals and 16 assists. Um, this is a guy who excels great puck skills. He has great hands, great speed, and he's just an overall puck hound. Like he never gives up on a play. He's always determined. And Greg was talking about creating turnovers and, you know, getting those opportunities. If, uh, you know, you have players like having a support cast to create those turnovers Lorenzo uh, Canonica is one of those guys that is always determined and he's always going to win or try to win those 50, 50 puck battles. Cause he's got really great speed. He's really great in transition and he can really catch you off guard in that, in that aspect. So I do think that if obviously Simon Nack is going to be leading the way, but uh, Canonica is definitely going to help out in the offensive role. I mean, whether it's going to be enough for comes tournament end, turn come tournaments end, I don't know. But if if they're going to rely on somebody other than Nack, it's going to be Canonica for sure. And yeah, uh, heading over to the defensive side of things right now, um, Matt. If if they, if obviously you know they're going to have the work cut out for him at the forward position, um, defense looks like it's going to be really difficult. I mean, they have Leon Bixell who was just a force at the U 18s last year. Um, you also have uh, Dario Sittler who captained the team as well. Pretty good production this year with 13 points in 24 games. Um, you also have Noah Meyer, Noah Delmond, Giancarlo Shanton as returning players on the back end is, is, is is the defense going to be their strength and going to be a reason why maybe they squeak out a win and possibly be a factor for them if they go on to the elimination stages? 
Well, yeah, I mean, that that's they got some good names on there. I mean, not a lot of drafted prospect, but uh, yeah, they, they believe that is their strength. I mean, goaltending is going to be a big thing, too. Um, their system in general, the Swiss system that they always seem to employ is very good defensively. Um, yes, they give up a lot of shots, but their goaltender is always there to stop. But I mean, if the defense can keep the chances down, and they do have that chance, and they have some good mobility on that back end as well. You're looking at, like you mentioned, Bixell, um, he's a very great, good skater for, he's a big guy, um, but he's got some good, he's got good size. He's got good mobility. Um, I think he's going to be a leader on this blue line. Um, he could be drafted in the later rounds of the first round, I believe, uh, this coming draft. So he's got a lot of talent there and some good support in some veterans, um, there, like, you know, the names you mentioned. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if this defense can hold up against the powers like Canada, US, uh, Russia, all these teams that just throw offense and waves at you. So uh, they're going to be up against it. They're going to have to block shots. They're going to have to be good in their own zone. They're going to have to get the puck out uh, quickly because these teams are just going to be on them every chance they can get. So if the defense isn't good, I think Switzerland is uh, one of those teams that's going to get blown out every game. So they're going to be a focal point of this tournament. That's for sure. So, yeah, so that's, uh, that's Switzerland uh, on the defense uh, side. Let's do a, a quick fire on the goaltending. Um, no Pat Pantanod, he's in goal. He's, you know, he's probably going to be the starter. I, in my preview pod, I said Pachel, uh was probably going to be where I was looking at him or Pash. Um, could be a guy that could uh, make it. He's in the U- USHL, but Pat News probably going to be the guy. Um, do you believe he's the last line of defense? Could he be a, a Martin Gerber uh, type uh, goaltender or a David Abisher? Those two are the guys that uh, foiled the big powers way back. Um, start with you, uh, Greg, on this one. Do you think he could be that type of guy? I don't know. Not if you look at his international <laughs> numbers. Uh, they're pretty. They're pretty lousy. Uh, career-wise, uh, it, it, on the international level, I mean, his, his goals against is four point six and, and an eighty-six save percentage. I mean, obviously, Swiss struggles. Uh, those aren't all his fault, but those aren't very good numbers to get confidence in. But when you look at what he's doing this season, uh, playing for St. John in the Q. He's got a 2.96 GAA and a nine point nine one four save percentage. Those are really good numbers for that league. Well, we always talk about the Q is the offense first. Maybe we'll play some defense out of the three junior leagues up in Canada. And he's putting up really good. Now, if you get a, a, a goals against under three and a save percentage over 91 in that league, you're playing really good. So uh, that if he comes in with some confidence, that that could help him if he, as long as he doesn't think about you know the nightmares he's had from some of the other international games he's he's had to endure, and he just thinks about good happy thoughts from St. John's. He sh- he should be, uh, you know, pretty good shape. But as we mentioned, it's it's all going to be about how that team plays in front of him. You know, the goalies can only do so much. If you're being bombarded from all sides, you know, you just kind of begin the turtle and can't wait for that final horn to, to sound. So um, he is that defense, you know, they've got the experience. They've got some nice defenders as, as, as you just talked about. And um, you know, it's going to be up to them to help out their goal turn because if they don't, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a long tournament. Yeah. Uh, Peter, you agree with that? Uh, I think he's the last line or is there someone else? Like I mentioned to Pash, could he come in and actually take over his starting job? Yeah, I think the only reason why um, Pathanode has kind of that edge is because he was on the team last year, and usually you want to give – usually that the, the starting goaltender like that, it, it goes to the veteran kind of thing, even though I think he only played one game. Um, he was on the team last year, so I think maybe that's the reason why he gets the nod. But if there's definitely a time where, you know, things aren't looking great for him, and I do agree with you, Matt, Kevin Pash, I think it's going to be – one of those guys to come in. I mean, in 13 games this year, I mean, he's got pretty impressive numbers with the Omaha Lancers in the USHL. 914, 223, a little on the smaller side where he's only 5'9", 170. I mean, he's not, he doesn't have that frame where he's mm. 6'1", 6'2", 190, 200 plus pounds in the crease. 
But given those numbers in, a, in the USHL, which has become a very, very strong lead in developing prospects and players to be drafted, this is a player that should be getting some recognition. And if there comes a point where maybe Pat no isn't playing great, Pash is going to come in, or maybe he just takes the reins from the very beginning and runs with it. So it's definitely going to be a very interesting situation in, in net for Switzerland. Yeah, and he played really well in the under 18s too. He's yeah. named one of the top three players uh, at that tournament. So uh, yeah, you never know, right? So, but again, they save usually percentage go with, that, right? with a losing record as well. Yeah, so I mean, they, there is going to be a competition there. We'll see how much of a how much of the uh, leash that uh, Pat Note gets. Um, if he's blown up in the first game, uh, may see Patch uh, come in and uh see what he can do so yeah so that's that's switzerland uh, we'll see if they can uh do something at this tournament and surprise because you should never look over them uh, i think we've seen that in the past so uh these teams can't be saying oh we're just gonna blow these guys out but that's not always the case so uh we'll see what happens i i did that preview post as i mentioned before so i uh, take a look at that at the hockey writers dot uh, com so that's there you go um so yeah that's the end of our three teams we'll do this uh this round um next week stay tuned uh we'll get to some of the big powers uh finland sweden uh and then of course canada and the u.s because those are the two that everyone's waiting for on this uh show i'm sure so uh let's go to our last part of the show and the uh, prospects of the week and uh we'll see who we out this week uh peter we'll start with you uh who do you have your prospect of the week yeah, um, I, I was so mad that he didn't fall to the Maple Leafs in the 2020 draft. Um, he was actually, t- he was taken 98th, the Maple Leafs had the 106, and my pick is Brandon Cooey from the North Bay Battalion. And I, there's always a theme with me from the OHO because, you know, that, that, that's where I'm from, that's where I watch most of my hockey. But Brandon Cooey's just, just absolutely destroying the league right now. Um, leading the league in points right now with 48 and 25 games, just under two points per game, 15 goals, 33 assists. And from what I counted in his game by game stats, there was only two games this whole season where he hasn't registered a point. And in his last three games, he has nine points. So that to me, his production is very consistent and it earned him his entry level contract. So must be doing something right. Very great value for the San Jose Sharks, uh, especially in the fourth round. Um, he's my pick of the week. Yeah, that's that's a good pick. Uh, so I just signed a central level of two, right? So, yeah. Um, Greg, who you got as your prospect of the week? I'm going to stick uh, in the OHL, and I'm going to go uh, over to Windsor, just across the border. Uh, good casinos there. Um, they uh, <laughs> Spitfire's dynamic center uh Wyatt Johnston is uh been just phenomenal um not only of late but the whole season uh he is showing the Dallas Stars that they uh he is worthy of that first round pick uh 21st or I believe it was they they used on him and that's a team that definitely you know you look at their current NHL roster you see a lot of guys getting long in the tooth um, you know, your Pavelski's, your Sagan's, your, you know, the, they need some young youth in, injected in that organization. And this guy is somebody to be excited about down there in Texas. Uh, he's got 14 goals and 38 points in just 23 games already this year. He had a six point game uh, against the Sting last week, mm-hmm. two goals, four assists. Uh, he's got points in 16 of his last 17 games and most of those are multiple point games i think only one or two is just one point uh his last five games he's got three goals and 13 points so i mean he's he's scoring goals and he's setting up goals he's doing it all that's what you want out of your center man you want a guy that can put the puck in the net and facilitate uh facilitate to his wingers he's doing it he looks every bit uh, worthy of a first round pick. He's another guy. He's he's got his entry level contract signed. He signed that um, uh, right before the season started. So he's he's locked up. Uh, Stars organization and Stars fans should be excited. Um, and uh, we'll be I'll be uh, seeing him in the Central Division sooner rather than later. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's for sure. Uh, I'm gonna go and. 
stick around locally here in WHL and uh, go with the Kamloops Blazers, uh, Matthew Semenov, who is a draft eligible prospect. So uh, start a bit talking about uh, some futures here and uh, not drafted yet, but uh, he's sure uh, making a case to up his rankings uh, a bit here. And he's got 13 goals in uh, and 30 points in 22 games already surpassed his numbers from last year in the same amount of games. He had 11 goals and 16 points in 22 last year. He's already got, he's already doubled it. So uh, this guy's up in his stock for sure. Uh, uh, Peter, you just released your, uh, your draft rankings, had him at 59. Mm -hmm. Um, That's in the second round. So uh, you're looking at a second round pick here and he was, I believe he was a C level prospect uh, when they had their, um, the NHL central scouting uh, stuff there. So, he's already up to at least in your mind, Peter. So, uh, yeah. he's, he's got some great, uh, he's got a great worth that work ethic, uh, which is one of the big things that I look at in a lot of draft picks for me, uh, is of work ethic. So, uh, and that's a big part of his game. He's, he's working hard to improve every day. His coaches has, has already taken note of that. Uh, so, I mean, this guy's going to be, uh, someone to watch in the later rounds, the second round for sure. I think too, I, I think I'll drop him in that second round too. Uh, so yeah, that's my pick, Matthew Semenoff. Uh, I believe, I thought he was Russian when I first saw his name, but then I'm like, <laughs> wait, no, uh, he's, uh, he is uh, American, but he has Canadian uh, citizenship according to elite prospects. So played right here at his double uh, a hockey, minor hockey in Burnaby. So uh, really close to where I live. So that's uh that's the guy I'll be looking not again, not, I don't just gravitate to guys that are named after me. So uh, <laughs> same name as me, but seems like that's what I seem to be doing lately. So, uh, but yeah, I will see what he does uh, later on. Either, either that or Canucks prospects, you know, one or the other. That too. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be more trying to branch out and Greg at this point. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> well, you guys keep making me say nice things about Red Wings prospects. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh we'll watch these guys as they go uh those uh, great cross process of the week there so that's that's another show uh guys that's it was fun wa- talking more world juniors well again like i said we'll be talking a lot more uh as the t- tournament is coming up fast uh we're what are we at two weeks uh two weeks, two weeks yeah. away so uh it's coming uh we'll be watching uh, some great hockey i'm sure so like I said, Sweden and uh, Slovakia is in there too. So we're going to talk about uh, Sweden, Finland, and Slovakia next episode. And then right after that, of the big guys, Canada, Russia, the Canada, US, which is projected to be the gold medal game, guys, right? Uh, we'll have some predictions, I'm sure, as well in that episode. So that's that's it for another show. Um, again, be sure to check out the hockeywriters.com and uh, the YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, like. Uh, give us a like, give us a comment. Uh, what do you believe will happen in this tournament? Uh, on our preview pre- predictions show, uh, make sure you give us predictions too. So um, we thank you for watching, uh, you know, our last, not the last episode, the one before when we started talking, we're, we've got some great views now. So 700 plus on that episode. So thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, tuning in to see what our takes are uh, about the world juniors. So uh, thanks so much. Um, hit us up at morning skate newsletter as well. Morningskate.io. Um, follow us all on Twitter, follow the hockey writers on Twitter. We got the daily download. We got, we're on discord, whole ton of stuff. So, um, make sure you just keep, keep tabs on everything. Uh, we got the world juniors previews already out. Final rosters are already getting released. Finland and Sweden are already released. Uh, final rosters there. There's a breakdown at the hockey writers as well, and we'll have those as they get released. So, Thanks for watching and uh, for Matthew, I mean, for Peter and Greg, this is Matthew and uh, we'll see you next time at uh, the Prospect Corner.